Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's session all about planning around barriers to behavior change. So if you are part of a cardiac rehab program, you're most likely focusing on um, different health behaviors and making action plans and goal setting around that. And um, it's normal that barriers can come up. So this is all about what to do about that. And I am Renee, a clinical coordinator and cardiac rehab supervisor at Toronto Rehab's cardiac program. Uh, once again, this is just a reminder, um, all of these sessions are for education only. Ask your own healthcare provider if you have any specific uh, questions um, about your own situation. And then at the end of the session, I'll do a couple of, uh, answer a few questions. So you can use the Q&A uh, button, which you will notice um, in your Zoom options. Um, in the middle of the presentation, uh, I want to make this a little bit interactive. So I'll be asking for some input from you, the audience. So for that part, I'll ask, I'll have you use the chat uh, function. Uh, that way I can see some responses uh, as they come in and, and I'll use your responses during the presentation. So by the end of this session, uh, you will be able to identify common barriers that come up to health behavior change, and then how to problem solve around these barriers. And something that I would like you to try for this week, your action item, is uh, once we come up with uh, a list of solutions that you can try, I'd like you to pick one of those solutions that speaks to you, that feels realistic for you, and try and make an action plan uh, using that solution for the week. So if you were joining us for the session, uh, it was a few weeks ago now that I did on goal setting and action planning. This is almost like a part two to that session uh, because as I mentioned, once you make some goals and action plans and try out your action plans, you're bound to hit some barriers along the way. And so this is part two, what to do when you hit those barriers and how to problem solve around them. So why is this information important to me? Uh, it's normal to come across barriers when you're working on a behavior change. And if you are prepared for these barriers uh, with some solutions, then you'll be more successful at overcoming the barriers. And then that will help keep you motivated as well to keep on going with all your action plans that you're setting for yourself. All right, so I'm going to Bear with me as I switch my screens around. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, you can use the chat box now. And I'd like you to come up with some common barriers um, that have come up for you whenever you're trying something new. So if you're planning out uh, a new exercise schedule, a new routine, if you um, try to drink more water for the week, if you tried to get better sleep for the week, and you tried out different ideas, what were some barriers that popped up that came in, in the way of you um, being able to successfully complete your action plan? So I will um, put the barriers in at the top and then down the, the columns, we'll come up with some solutions together. All right, so I see one person has typed in weather. Okay, so I guess poor weather, getting in the way of getting out to outside to exercise, so that's common whether it's either too hot or in the winter months, too cold or just rainy. Great. Okay, what else? What, what's another barrier? Uh, okay, time. So time to, I'm making an assumption here. So correct me if I'm putting words in your mouth. So time to fit exercise into your week. Yes. Okay, great. We got it. Okay, anything else? What else is a barrier for you that's come up uh, whenever you've tried to, to make some changes for yourself? What gets in the way? 
any other ideas? I can fill some in as well. Um, motivation is one that I hear often. Um, cooking healthy meals. Okay, so I'm going to have the person who typed in cooking healthy meals. If you could elaborate what what has been difficult about that? What is your barrier? Um, someone else typed in equipment. So I guess having um, access to equipment. That makes sense. Um, someone else typed in arthritis pain. So good. I'm going to put pain or um, injuries. Oops. Injuries that might get in the way. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Someone else typed in cravings as a barrier. I imagine with, with eating, that applies to that. Um, proper space area. Okay. I'm going to put... Um, the person who typed in having enough space and area to exercise at home, I'll, I'll clump that into having access to equipment. Okay, healthy meals for my, okay, cravings. Let's put uh, the healthy meals comment together with cravings. Okay. And okay, not enough sleep as a barrier. Um, all right. Okay. Someone else mentioned uh, to avoid people who eat sweets constantly because it's very tempting. All right, so that's. That is an idea, but hopefully you don't have to be lonely and avoid everybody around you just to just to get by and avoid sweets. All right, we'll get to that when we come up with some solutions of cravings and healthy meals. Okay, binge TV watching, someone commented on. Is Would it be fair to put that under motivation? This is my own interpretation. But if you find you're binge watching TV, especially during this pandemic, COVID-19, um, is it fair to say that you're sort of lacking the motivation to, to shut off the TV and get up and, and get going on something different? If I'm off, you comment again and I'll, um, and I'll get it. Oh, hinders, okay, so hindering sleep by watching TV, okay. All right, so I think we have lots to work on here. All right, so here are some common barriers across the top of this, the screen. Um, exercises, oh, tedious, yes. So I'm gonna put, um, this is common that so many people find that exercise is boring. So what do you do about it? Okay, all right. So look across the top of your screen, that top row, and hopefully there's one of those barriers up there that um, you can relate to, something that maybe you've experienced yourself. If not, and you have something different, you go ahead and add it in. I can always add more columns and rows into the table. Um, but let's get started with some problem solving. So um, I would like everyone to also get involved and in, in interact with the problem solving part. Because um, I'm not necessarily an expert on, on all of this stuff. You are all experts as well with your own, uh, your own routines, your own lifestyle. And so you might have some ideas that will also help others along the way. So I'll, I'll throw some in ideas, but uh, if you can add more to the chat as well as we go through. Okay, so we'll start with hot, poor weather. So too hot, too cold, rainy. Uh, you're unable to get outside to do your exercise. So what are some solutions to that? How can you get around it and still complete your exercise at home? 
Um, oh, I just have a review question from someone. Is, is temperature and humidity equal to the humidex? Um, no. So when, when the weather channel is reporting humidex, that is a different, um, a different factor. It's how sort of how hot it might feel, including humidity. But when we want you to use our heat safety index, which is located on Cardiac College, we want you to find the actual temperature and then the percentage of humidity is on the, the vertical axis that you, and then can line up your points on the graph. All right, some solutions to poor weather. So if you can use a gym, um, which is hard with COVID-19, I know stuff might be slowly opening up soon, um, but that is an option normally. Uh, walking in a mall. These are some comments just coming in, oops. Uh, yes, yeah, so again, malls, I think, are still closed with COVID-19, um, but in normal circumstances, malls are a great idea. Many people go there for exercise. They open up early in the mornings before the shops are open, and you'll find a lot of people go there for exercise in the winter, because it's nice and good temperature, and the summertime, it's air-conditioned, and it's a good spot to walk as well. Um, okay, here... Uh, Interesting comment from someone. So that there's not necessarily poor weather, just poor clothing. So making sure to wear appropriate clothing and that can make a really big difference. So um, especially in, this, in the winter time, um, you are, for most people, you're safe to go outside and exercise up to a temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius. So as long as you have the proper layers that you're wearing, um, waterproof layers, you can be quite comfortable and still get your exercise done outside. Uh, same thing in the summertime, loose fitting clothing, light colored clothes, and, uh, and you might be able to still get by. Um, okay, walking, um, walking DVDs or videos or um, YouTube videos, our Walk with Rob sessions. But we have Tuesdays and Thursdays. Great. Okay, change. Okay, the time of day also that you um, get outside to exercise. So this is for um, specifically hot weather. So exercise um, early morning or late evening, if you can. The temperature will be much different uh, compared to during the day, noon, afternoon time. Uh, okay, let's see, do I have anything else to add? Uh, another idea I'm going to add in is um, if you're inside for the day, if it's poor weather, whether too cold, too hot, um, see if you can do some resistance training. Oops. Uh, so make it a resistance training day. So if hopefully inside if, you're, if you've got some equipment at home. Um, now with COVID-19, since many people don't have access to weights, we have a resistance training program to share with you that does not use any equipment at all. So it's just body weight. Uh, the videos that Rob and I did online on Cardiac College, also just using body weight, no equipment. Um, so there's an idea so to get some exercise in for the day. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next um, barrier. So um, someone had mentioned having time to fit your exercise into your week. So lots of people are busy with life. Um, some of you are working, even if you're not working, you may have other family obligations. Um, you, uh, depending on your, your age group, you could have older parents that you're taking care of or um, younger children that you're taking care of or younger grandchildren. So uh, it's, it can be difficult to find the time to fit the exercise in. So what are some solutions that you have uh, to share with others of how you find the time to fit your exercise in? Okay, schedule, that's a good comment. So um, try and schedule your exercise. and make it like a, a meeting or an important appointment. And uh, so you might be able to, you know, on a Sunday night, look ahead for the week 
and pick your times of when you think it's realistic for you to get some exercise in and then write it down. Remember, that's really important, writing stuff down as opposed to just thinking about it. Um, okay, schedule, more people talking about scheduled. Oh, multitasking. Okay, so that if you're able to, um, an example I can think of is, uh, let's say if you have some phone calls to make, if you can walk while uh, making phone calls, or if you need to head to the store for um, you know a couple of items, depending on where you live, if you can walk to the store and back. Um, sometimes that feels like it's more productive when you're walking to somewhere, as opposed to just walking around the block for exercise. Um, instead of sitting and watching TV, if you can do it in front of the TV, so if you have equipment like a treadmill or bike, that helps to pass the time too. Uh, okay, this is a good one. Exercising with a friend. That way you can make a commitment with that friend and say, let's meet Saturday morning, 10 a.m. And then again, you're more likely to stick to that uh, time slot if you've made a commitment to a friend. Uh, all right, someone else commented about um, prioritizing. So making make it a priority. So this comes with a little bit um, linked to motivation. So thinking about why are you exercising? Why is it important for you? Why do you want to do it? And then, um, and if it's really important to you and you value the exercise, uh, you might find that you're better able to make time for it in, in your week. So that's, that's linked with motivation, I think, making it a priority. All right, good. All right, let's move on to motivation. This is probably the trickiest one. Um, and a, com a linked comment that um, exercise can be boring and that's very normal. Um, not everyone enjoys exercise, um, but there are some ways that we can make it a little bit more interesting or uh, make it more enjoyable um, to get through a walk if you're not looking forward to it. So what are your ideas? What do you do to, to make exercise more interesting? What do you do to help motivate yourself to exercise? All right, we have some ideas here. So um, playing music or watching videos, if you can, if you're on like a piece of equipment, you could do that. Um, I like to uh, listen to audio books and podcasts when I exercise. That way I look forward to, to the exercise because I know I get to listen to one of, you know, a good book that I've been waiting for. So that, that helps sometimes. Uh, music, more comments about music. Um, when the gym's open in a group setting. Yeah, so that's, that's fun too. So a group, a group class for exercise. Those can be a little more motivating as well. Um, again, it's a committed, you're making a commitment to a certain time and day when the group class is running. Um, being just being part of a group even around others at a gym that can help and be a little bit more motivating as well um, exercise with others someone else commented yeah yeah getting getting friends or family involved and maybe there's some um, like a sport or like a family game that will also count as exercise so you can double check with the rehab team um, if you're thinking about different sports or, or games. Another piece of advice I have with motivation is that um, sometimes action has to come before you don't feel like doing something. Um, you're dreading going out for a walk. It's just not, not interesting for you. Um, you know, if you sometimes if you just force yourself to say, I'm, I'm going to get out there and, I'm, and I'll go for five minutes, that's it. And just having that little bit of forced action. Um, once you get out there and get moving, you will most likely find that you can keep going for longer. And then after you complete that that one walk, let's say on a Monday, you might find because you did that that action piece that the motivation comes later. Now you're motivated to keep going and try it again on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Um, so think about just small little bits of action to get you up and moving, and then the motivation will come later. 
Okay, good. And uh, and motive, remembering that your the motivation for your exercise. Why are you doing it? Is it for your health? Is it in order to um, help your blood pressure, your um, your cholesterol, uh, help you reduce cravings from smoking? Is it to increase your fitness so that your risk of heart disease goes down? Okay, so just remembering why why are you doing it? All right, next barrier that comes up. So having access to equipment or having space at home. So uh, for some of you, especially during this time, if you don't, even if you don't have access to your gym or like a common area in a condo that has equipment, um, what are your ideas? What have you been doing if you don't have access to equipment or, or space at home to do any exercise? So I'll just remind everybody that we have the resistance training programs. Where you don't need equipment. We, we were just using body weights. So you can follow along with those. Uh, moving furniture, somebody put. <laughs> so again, depending on your ability, um, there may be other household activities that you need to do, whether it's cleaning or you know, sweeping the floor, you know, sure, that, that's movement. You're, you're getting up, you're moving, vacuuming, put some music on, make it a little bit more enjoyable. Um, up and down the stairs. So again, depending on your level of fitness and your abilities, going up and down the stairs and making sure that you're not at risk of tripping or falling. That could be another uh, idea for some exercise. Um, again, the nice weather helps if you're able to just to go outside. And if you have space around your home, uh, if you can, whether just walk around your house or in a yard, if you can. I know with COVID-19, some parks and trails have been closed during this time. Um, Okay, and then some video, yeah, using videos online. If you live in an apartment building, um, an idea is to walk, um, walk in the corridors of your apartment building. Uh, again, maybe not a good idea with COVID-19 if you're, you're trying to stay away from people, but under usual circumstances. All right, there's a question here about um, a good exercise to do on long drives or if you're sitting a lot. Um, I would say, so using the, the exercise bands, the, the, the TheraBands that we have, those are great for traveling because they're very compact and light, um, but you can still do some stuff while you're sitting, you know, with your arms stretching out the bands, um, some bicep curls. Um, if you are sitting a lot, even just getting up to do, you know, some heel raises and marching in the spot, that's, that's good as well. Okay, let's move on to a common barrier. So having, living with chronic pain or maybe an injury um, that has gotten in the way of your routine. Uh, so this one can be really tricky, um, but let's hear your ideas. So what do you do if you, um, if you suddenly hurt your knee, hip, uh, pulled a muscle? Um, so that actually that could be a that's a little bit different than if you're living with chronic pain. So we might get some different kinds of ideas here. I'll start with um, let's say if you have a knee injury, then you could only do um, the upper body resistance training. And even if you do that for you know a couple of weeks, just leaving the lower body out. If you if you've hurt your knees, that's okay. It's this is more of a short term condition. Um, 
Okay, no, no other ideas for pain. I think if you're living with chronic pain, uh, if you can look into some relaxation techniques, and I'll share some resources at the end of this presentation as well, um, that can help you um, to manage the pain so then you can then focus on other things. Okay, if you do have an injury, um, someone's just commenting, starting up slow, just be cautious of the area of injury. So there might be, um, this is a, a good point, focus on the stuff that you can do if you've had an injury, as opposed to focusing on, well, you know, I've hurt my, I've hurt my arm, so I can't do any bicep curls. Well, that's okay, you can leave bicep curls out. And what can you do? Can you still do some walking? Can you still do some lower body resistance training? Uh, oh, good, this is a good comment, modifying the exercises. So we do have lots of options for different alternatives with exercises. And if you're unsure, talk to your cardiac rehab team and we can always give you ideas or suggestions how to modify an exercise. Um, taking, okay, taking medication prior to exercise. So this is, um, for example, uh, with chronic pain or arthritis, maybe you, it's, it will help for you in your usual routine to take, um, take a pain medication, whether it's Tylenol, let that settle in and then do your exercise after. And you and your doctor can figure out together uh, what would be the best uh, routine or setup when you're taking medication for pain and how to do that and time it out with your exercise. Okay. Uh, oh, there's a question about, is it okay to continue with exercise um, if you have chronic pain, like a knee or hip replacement or swelling or pain in the ankle? And for the most part, it is okay to, to keep moving and keep exercising as long as the particular exercise is not causing you pain in the moment, then, um, then it is better to keep yourself moving. And if you have very specific areas that are painful, then I would recommend um, going to physiotherapy to address your specific concerns with um, chronic pain or, or swelling. And then, and again, working around that area with your other cardiac rehab activities. Um, but getting some physiotherapy advice on very specific areas. Okay. All right, let's move over to uh, the barrier of cravings. And so I guess I'm interpreting this as um, cravings getting in the way of choosing nutrition, nutritious foods or, or healthy foods. So let's see, what are your, what are your ideas? surrounding cravings or or maybe cooking healthy meals maybe it's difficult for you to um to come up with ideas to cook healthy meals uh, maybe you're living alone and so that's difficult to to cook you know cook a big meal if it's just yourself um i'll give an idea here if you are if you are living alone or just two people um if you can find the motivation to still cook and then And then portion out, freeze your leftovers. There's nothing wrong with leftovers, you know, freeze, freeze your food. And that way you've gone into the effort of maybe cooking a, a large meal. Um, and then, but you can still make use of it throughout the week. Okay, so someone's idea is to not buy foods that increase your cravings. Okay. I'm going to add a comment to this, this idea that, um, you know, depending on your, your cravings, sometimes if you avoid a food, it will make you crave it even more. Um, so think about your, you know, if you're having some cravings, if you, even if you indulge in that craving, um, remember that one, one moment of, you know, eating a certain food or one meal, it's not going to affect you in the long run. Um, and so letting yourself still enjoy some foods and enjoy your favorite foods, your treats, even if it's chocolate or ice cream, and uh, enjoy that and don't feel like you need to completely restrict any type of food. And then you might find that your, your cravings for that food 
reduce a little bit when you don't make them so off limits and label them as bad food. Um, okay, so have some, here's another idea. So have, have some, oops, have some snack food um, prepared and ready to eat. So when you're having a, a craving or a snack, usually you want something that's right now ready to eat. You don't want, you don't feel like preparing something. Um, so whether that's uh, getting, going grocery shopping and getting things like nuts or um, veggies or fruit cut up, ready to go in the fridge, that's a good idea. Because if it's more convenient, then you're more likely to grab it. Okay. In terms of finding healthy foods, uh, I'll add a comment maybe. Maybe look online for new recipes to try just to keep things interesting. Um, we have a couple of recipes that you can find on Cardiac College if you're looking for new ideas. Or even uh, maybe share, share recipes with friends. Yeah, everyone, if everyone picks their favorite, favorite recipes and share with each other, that's a way to get some new ideas. Um, lots of, someone's commenting, lots of substitutions to use when you're trying to cook foods more healthy. Um, yeah, so there's, oops. so I'm gonna write here as an example, experiment with spices with your cooking for new flavors. And that doesn't add, using herbs and spices does not add any extra sodium to your meals. Okay. Good. All right, let's move on to our, our last barrier here. Uh, so not getting enough sleep. And then this the particular person commented that um, getting TV gets in the way. So you're binge watching TV which I will also admit to during this pandemic, uh, catching up on a lot of Netflix, that's for sure. Uh, all right, so what are some barriers, or sorry, some solutions for you if you find that you're not getting enough sleep? What are some ways that you can um, have better sleep hygiene? And some of you may have watched a previous session about sleep from Dr. Ray Tav, our psychologist, that's his favorite topic. So something that I've learned from Dr. Raytev, I'll add in here. Uh, keep your, your sleep time and wake time consistent through the week if you can. Okay, someone else commented as well, go to bed at the same time. Um, try to avoid napping during the day, yeah. So make sure that you're tired enough when you go to bed at night. Um, that reminds me though, if you find that you're, you're not sleeping well at night and you find you're drifting off during the day and, and wanting to nap, maybe talk to your doctor about having a sleep study done, a sleep test. Um, so this will test for sleep apnea, among some other things. Um, so that will be important to find out um, if you are not sleeping well, if you're not getting good quality sleep, remember that is a risk factor in itself for heart disease, diabetes, and stroke. Um, and you, and yeah, that will really um, affect your, how you fall asleep at night or and maybe if you find you're drifting off, napping in the day. So that's something to look out, uh, look out for, talk to your doctor about it if you find that's a concern for you. Another, some more advice we have here. Oh yes, my favorite, turn off your devices. Turn off devices and screens. So that's a good action plan to try for the week. Uh, if you find that you're guilty of this, uh, maybe pick a time, whether it's 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., set a time with yourself where you're gonna turn off your screens and iPhones and iPads and all of that um, to enable your, yourself to relax and get ready for bed. Uh, someone else has an idea. Oh, a sleep mask. They started using a sleep mask and found that that really helps. Yeah.
yeah, so just different ideas to help help with your sleep hygiene and help you know create the a nice quiet dark room that might help you fall asleep. Um, there's another idea, some relaxation meditation techniques. Lots of stuff you can find online as well, some you know guided meditations and relaxation, things you can listen to that will help you relax and get to bed a little bit better. Good, all right, these are great ideas. Uh, maybe sometimes, you know, drinking just a herbal tea before bed, that can help to relax as well. All right. Great, okay, so what I'd like you to do is to just take, I'll leave the screen up for a little bit. And so maybe take a minute, if you've got, um, if you have a cell phone with you, if you're looking at, at a computer screen, you could use your cell phone and maybe take a picture of this grid that we created together so that you've uh, got these ideas, different ideas for solutions and how to problem solve around barriers that come up for you. Um, and maybe also take a look and find Find one of these solutions that sounds like it's something you could try this week. Whether it's um, turning off your devices, that's, that's one a favorite one of mine, I need to start doing that. Um, or maybe trying to you know, find a, an online video for exercise that you could try doing in, in the comfort of your home to get something done that way. Um, maybe calling up a friend this week to see if they'd like to meet you for a walk. Uh, you can still social distance and so maybe, you know, spread out um, on the sidewalk or if you have room on, on the road, you know, one on either side of the road, that, that can help to be motivating still, meeting a friend. Okay, let's just go back to my, my comments. Oh yeah, so Crystal's reminding me that we can include this table that we've created together and we can post it with the, the Q&A comments that we post online, uh, where you can go and watch the recorded version of this session. That's a great idea. Okay, good. So I will go back to, bear with me again as I switch my slides around. So some resources, as I mentioned, that, are, that you can also access. So on the Cardiac College website, under the Take Control, tab from the top and then over on the left you'll notice uh, this is where you initially would have found resources about goal setting and action planning there's also a section there for problem solving and relapse planning so um, just some ideas of what you can try to uh, to work around a barrier that has come up for you and as well it will be in the orange take control uh, guidebook that's part of the the, the physical booklets as well, there's some other, uh, other programs that are really beneficial that are offered um, uh, in the city by the Toronto Central Lynn. And so they have a couple of programs running. Uh, one is Healthy Living with Chronic Conditions and another one Choose Health. And these are operated out of the, the South Riverdale Community Health Center. But um, due to COVID-19, of course, they're not meeting physically together in groups. And so everything is being done virtually which is a good thing if you do not live necessarily close to the uh, South Riverdale Community Health Center. So I imagine no matter where you are, you could join in to these sessions virtually. So uh, I'll give you a minute to, um, to take down this contact information here if it's something that interests you, and I'm sure we can post this information as well. Um, but I'll just tell you a little bit about um, the program. So they, these are free programs. They are six weeks long, so one, one session per week uh, for about two and a half hours. And they are for individuals who are living with a chronic disease, as well as for their caregivers. So maybe a family or a friend or anyone who is a caregiver for someone who has a chronic disease. Um, there's lots of skills for the caregivers to help learn about self-care for themselves. Uh, while they are also giving care to maybe a friend or family member that has chronic disease. So some of the themes that are talked about in these sessions, um, 
again, talking about setting goals and action plans. So this is a, you know, it's a common, common skill to learn uh, when you're living with chronic disease. Um, also helping to learn skills around decision making, uh, some pain management, stress management, uh, communication skills with your, within your family and also with your healthcare team. Uh, they cover some healthy eating, physical activity guidelines, uh, help you to manage your medicine and also covering some relaxation techniques as well. So uh, this is a really great workshop and uh, available to anyone. You can, it's self-referral, so you can email them or, or give them a call if it's something that you're interested in. And I believe they have varying um, times when they offer these workshops throughout the year, different days and time slots as well. Okay, so we'll go to the um, question and answer. Okay, so anything, any questions that you might have for me related to um, everything we talked about today around problem solving, barriers, how to work around that in order to be more successful with your action plans or motivation. I don't see any questions so far related to today's session. So maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we solved all your problems. Uh, already with the, the uh, grid that we created together. Um, oh, one comment here. I missed part of this for a phone call. Will you be posting a recording of this? Yes, definitely. So a recorded session of this webinar will be on the Cardiac College website, just like all the others. And we will also post the problem solving table that we created and the contact information for the chronic disease workshops. All right, someone else commented, we covered most of the questions. Yeah, I think that was the fact that we were uh, interactive and, and communicating throughout the webinar. Seems like we, we addressed everyone's questions. Good. Okay. Uh, let's go back to my screen here. All right, so just a reminder to everyone uh, the tomorrow's session will be at one o'clock and it is a, an interactive uh, activity session. So walk and talk with Rob again. As well, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. is with the, the Women with Heart online series. And the topic is uh, quit playing games with my heart, sex differences and cardiovascular disease um, from Dr. Ashley Heidema. Uh, so she'll be giving tomorrow's presentation. She was uh, working with us at Toronto Rehab previously, and now she's uh, one of the doctors at the London uh, Cardiac Rehab. And that's everything. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you were able to come away with some ideas um, for your barriers that might come up. And uh, I'm sure we will see each other again soon. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.